Good afternoon. My name is Ganapati Krishnan, and in this talk, I will discuss how we are bringing conversational commerce to the next 500 million in India. First, some background about India and Flipkart. India can be looked at as many Indias, as the market poses some very peculiar and complex challenges that are either absent completely in other markets or are highly limited. The diversity in its geography, culture, languages, literacy levels, and income levels means that a service that may appeal to people in one region may fail to attract people altogether in another. A one-size-fits-all solution wouldn't work in India. This gives you a mind-boggling range of customer expectations to solve for, extremely varied across different customer segments. We are solving for multiple complexities and helping scale commerce through technology. Some of these complexities include operational complexity. Until about a few years ago, distance connectivity was slow or expensive, which meant low average speed for trucks and expensive air connectivity. Warehouses not having scale and efficiency for fulfillment. Similarly, in consumer finance, only the top of the funnel has credit cards. So our playbook has been to solve for access and affordability for Indian customers. And the levers Flipkart has used to scale the e-commerce industry are innovation and technology. As per industry estimates, the Indian e-commerce market is expected to grow to $200 billion by 2026. While today Flipkart has 350 million registered customers, we are heavily focused in investing to bring in the next 500 million customers. And catering to these isn't going to be an easy task given their uniqueness. We are investing heavily in innovating in voice and vernacular spaces, allowing online shoppers to interact with the platform in their own language and enabling voice commands. Today, Flipkart is available in 11 languages, covering over 80% of the official languages spoken across the country. And about 30% of our new customers come through these language interfaces. From display banners to category pages and product descriptions, Flipkart offers an end-to-end -end language experience to millions of customers by utilizing a judicious mix of translation and transliteration on millions of words on the platform to bring a natural language experience. This includes transliteration of terms such as EMI, delivery, filter, cart, and OTP, instead of simply translating them to enable better resonance with the native experience, helping users get acquainted with e-commerce technologies. Further, we have invested heavily in setting up a tech-ready supply chain to help hundreds of thousands of sellers. And this has been pivotal to path-breaking customer experience offerings that help build trust in e-commerce. And we are further doubling down on our efforts in bringing a natural language experience and creating a shared value for millions of our customers sellers and ecosystem partners across the country. Voice and vernacular are having a significant impact on the e-commerce landscape. The monthly active users for voice assistant applications is growing dramatically year over year. In addition, we find that one out of three new e-retail customers use the Vernac interface. One out of 10 visits via the Vernac interface. In India, most people combine English with their native language. Customers are very used to typing using the Roman keyboard in a combination of Hindi and English that we call Hinglish. Using a mobile keyboard is complicated for Indian regional languages. Hence, customers prefer interacting via voice. We believe that the 500 million users that we are introducing to e-commerce will primarily want to interact with us through a regional language interface and also with voice. Flipkart has developed state-of-the-art voice recognition and translation technologies that we'll talk about later for regional languages. The current e-commerce paradigm requires you to put in keywords for a search, use filters to narrow down search, look at multiple products, read product descriptions, examine specs, read user ratings, reviews, etc. Early adopters of e-commerce have developed these behaviors during the last two decades of online shopping. There's a lot of work involved, which the next 500 million is simply not interested in doing. Instead, they want the process to be really simple and they want all the information on hand to order. Consumers use a mix of English and regional languages. For example, in this case, they use the word ladki, which means girl in Hindi. 
combining it with another word called chappal. Flipkart wants to simplify this journey by helping the next 500 million customers shop via chat and voice. There are four steps in the e-commerce transaction journey. Find the product you want, make sure it meets your needs, transact, optionally engage with customer service if there's a problem. All of these can be enabled via chat and voice. In the next few slides, I will walk you through an overview of how AI is used to enable the decision assistant. This schematic shows our proposed model for the decision assistant. Currently, we have launched a decision assistant without voice and regional languages, but are in the process of adding voice and support for regional languages. First, we convert an utterance into text. Flipkart has developed an ASR system that has an industry-leading word error rate for Indian languages, including in English. We convert all voice input, including English, into Devanagari because it can represent the voice input phonetically. Then this is translated using our translation models. Then we find, then we recognize the intent of the query as well as identify named entities. And I'll go into this in a little bit more detail. We use a deep learning model to determine whether the question is answerable. If it is not, we send it to the agent. Otherwise, we generate an answer from FAQs, reviews, product descriptions, and specifications using rules as well as a generated model. The answer is then translated back into the user's language using a text-to-speech module. Let's talk a little bit about the intent hierarchy. The intent hierarchy represents a work in progress to integrate various top-level intents. The top-level intents are called Uber intents. And these Uber intents are decision, discovery, post-purchase, and chit-chat. Since this is a model that needs to be run for every query, we use a lightweight by LSTM model. For the decision assistant, once we identify that this is a decision intent, we are then able to identify common intents, such as payment options and offers that are common across all verticals. We extract entities from these queries and then populate an API to get an answer back to the user. For example, we may activate a warranty API for manufacturer warranty information. We answer product spec questions by using a Q&A model on rich data as well as on product specification. We also use user-generated content such as reviews and FAQs to find answers, and majority sentiment of answers are sent back to the user. Fine-grained NER recognition or named entity recognition is especially important for us. It's a complex problem because we have hundreds of entities, even in a single category such as lifestyle. This requires a lot of labeling to improve the quality of our intent entity detection model. However, it's really crucial for us to get this right so we can populate the right APIs to get the answer the customer wants. In the example above, is a shirt available in blue. We find the entity color and the value of the entity as blue and use that information to construct a query to determine whether a blue shirt is available. Enia is also used to mask queries to help ML models generalize better. For example, let's say we have most people asking about a blue iPhone then we'll have a preponderance of queries with blue in them. Instead, it would be better to train on the query that the color is used as a generic term in the query. This model will be better at recognizing other queries, such as, is this iPhone available in red? We use a number of AI technologies. First and foremost, we need to represent the words and sentences in the query. For words, we've trained our own fast text embeddings, and for Sentences we use a word-based Siamese network. These form inputs to various models. For example, for intent recognition, we use BioLSTMs since we need this to be very fast and low latency. We use sequence models for named entity recognition and also uh, using the word embeddings as input. We use sentence embeddings as inputs to transform our models, such as Albert, for complex tasks such as span-based answer extraction. We also use generative models such as T5 for inference and answer generation. Using a combination of these technologies, we're able to find answers to a lot of the questions that the users send us. I wanted to summarize some of our learnings. One of the learnings is frequently to use lightweight models. And the reason this is important is because we have to run these lightweight models millions of times. So for intent recognition, lightweight models 
are just perfect. For more complex tasks, such as getting the span of an answer in a document, we need to use more heavyweight models. A good MLOps infrastructure saves you a lot of time and lets you experiment more frequently. Often, our gains are small for every experiment, but as we keep experimenting, these gains add up to give us high quality product. One of the things that's really important is having a great tool for labeling. We do a lot of labeling and it's important for us to be as efficient as possible. There are two important things. One is we need to make sure the quality of labeling is very high because if we feed bad quality labels for models, we aren't going to get very good results. And we use a lot of metrics in ensuring that our label quality is high. For example, we use disagreement rates to make sure that the labels are actually high and we send a certain percentage of our queries to be labeled by multiple judges. We also use active learning effectively because active learning helps us to reduce the cost of labeling by sending only those queries that really need to be labeled. We also use synthetic data generation. As I had said previously, we also use NER to do masking, help the model train on a smaller number of queries, but more effectively. We also need great analytics because this whole process of improving our models is an iterative one. So we need to find various opportunities where we can improve our models. So using great analytics, we're able to find areas of improvement and using these areas of improvement, we're able to train and make our models better. We're working on incorporating some new areas into the product. One is high quality chit chat. It's really important when a user comes in and they ask some questions, we're able to respond in interesting, humorous and intelligent manner rather than in a wooden manner. So we're incorporating chit chat so that we can keep the user engaged. We're also incorporating zero shot or few shot learning. And the reason this is important is because since there are hundreds and hundreds of verticals, it's very difficult to scale labeling across to all these verticals cost effectively. Hence, we use zero shot. We are working on various techniques of doing zero shot or few shot learning. We are also working on incorporating video reviews. There's a lot of reviews that are related to products that are in videos by various people. And we're looking at incorporating some of this information to give our customers information that they could use making a decision. Integration between decision, discovery, uh, post-purchase, chit-chat, so on, right? I think this is really important because the customer often doesn't know what they want. And so what we find is we find even when question, people are asking questions about a product, we want to make sure that they can get answers to other questions. So here's an example of a question that looks like a decision intent query, but it's actually something around discovery. So let's say a user asks, does this phone have two SIMs? Uh, and this phone may have only one SIM. So we might answer the yes, no, the phone does not have two SIMs, but that's not a very helpful answer to the user. So what we really like to do is tell the user, no, this phone doesn't have two SIMs, but here are three other phones that have two SIMs. So incorporating things like discovery in the product can make the product far more useful. Abstract summarization. We often have information from multiple sources that we want to present to the user. One of the ways to do it is simply list the information, but it places a greater cognitive strain on the user to understand this information. Hence, we're working on abstract summarization so that the user can get a abstract of all the information that they're looking for. Generative models for answers. One of the ways that we generate answers for users is we use a template-based model to generate an answer back to the user. It works pretty well, but as you can imagine, as we try to scale this for multiple languages and multiple verticals, we'll have to generate many, many templates so that we can have the right kind of answers given back to the user. So we are working on generative models so that we can generate the answers automatically using ML techniques and many more. We are working on many other enhancements to the project. Thank you for your time. And I hope you learned something about how we are approaching the decision assistant at Flipkart.